Lock in your responses, please. It's good. It's perfectly fine to refer to the restatement. That's not, or refer to the materials that I gave you, the instructions that I gave you, the introduction that I gave you to capacity. All right, so we've got 26 responses. Um, uh, we're right at the borderline. Uh, let's take 30 seconds. Don't change your answer, okay? So I'm going to stop delivery of that question. Um, don't change your answer, and I'm going to go ahead and deliver it again. Um, so take 30 seconds, talk in your groups, and see if you can get to the cons uh, consensus on the answer. No, don't put in another answer. Yeah. Talk first. That's the idea. Confer in your groups. The question is whether or not a prior disaffirmance is necessary in order to avoid, to have a court not enforce the contract. So we have what looks like on face value an okay contract, but in an essence it is void because a mentally incompetent person made it. So do, does that person need to take further action to avoid the contract? Is this is kind of the question. Correct. Yes, that's right. Okay, lock in your answers. Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to show you the results. Um, this is, this is t definitely better, although we didn't improve quite as much as I would have hoped. Okay, so here's the deal. This is a little bit related to what I was just talking about with Sam's group over there. What's going on here is we have a contract that is void because it was entered into by somebody who's under guardianship and in particular is mentally incompetent, right? So the contract is void ab initio, right? Meaning from the start. I don't use Latin very much, but I like that one. Um, <laughs> So, uh, so, the, so the contract is void, and now the question is, is there any other action that the um, guardian has to take in order for the contract to not be enforced? Well, the, the fact is that the party seeking enforcement of the contract will be the other party, right? They go to court and try to enforce it, and no, the, other, the, the guardian doesn't have to disaffirm the contract because all the guardian has to do is come in and say, it's void, right? It was void from the start because this person has a guardian, is mentally incompetent, and that's what the rule is. Sam. But if you had to go into court and say, like, this person is incompetent, isn't that formally disaffirming the contract? No. Well, I mean, I guess what I say, I'm using disaffirm in the conventional sense, which is to give notice to the other party that you no longer wish to be bound by the contract, okay? So that's what it means to disaffirm a contract. Kind of the opposite of what I was talking about with um, uh, Charlie about affirming the contract, right? So you can affirmatively affirm, that's not a very good phrase, but you, get, you know what I'm talking about. Um, you can take action to affirm, or you can take action to disaffirm. In this case, there's no requirement that you take action to disaffirm. You just go and wait until you get sued, and then you say, Ah, my defense is this person's under guardianship. Okay? Yeah. Megan. Are these kind of contracts void or avoidable just in the case of minors and Well, so the um, material, the introduction materials that I wrote for you um, explain that it is void. So a person who's under guardianship for whatever reason, but particularly for mental incompetency, um, that contract is void from the start. Okay? Not voidable.